Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to elaborate a little bit about a discussion we had several months ago regarding uh, type 1 diabetes and a gluten-free diet. And uh, there was a lot of commentary after I did that particular video uh, coming from parents of children with type 1 diabetes who uh, some of them were upset um, thinking that I was telling them that all they had to do was take their child off of gluten in order to uh, reverse type 1 diabetes. Um, that's not what I said in, in the video. Basically, that particular video talked about a particular case study of a particular uh, young man. He was, uh, I think, less than a year old when he was initially diagnosed, and uh, what occurred was he was put on a gluten-free diet and he never needed insulin. And they followed him for about two years and he stayed uh, in remission. So that was really all I talked about uh, in that particular video. But the comments have continued to come in and there does seem to be some confusion. So uh, I wanted to clarify, hopefully, a bit more and talk a bit more about the association with gluten and type 1 diabetes. We do know that um, Celiac disease and type 1 diabetes share similar genes, so they do seem to have some concurrence as far as where they appear. Uh, one, just I've, I've said before that I've heard from a lot of uh, parents of children and, um, and adults for that matter who have had good success with gluten. So this one just came in yesterday, which uh, prompted me to want to do this video today. I'm going to follow this by research, but just to give you an idea of the kind of things that I hear and we see here at the clinic, um, this was from a mom and she was talking about her 14-year-old daughter. Uh, she was diagnosed um, January 2012, so exactly a year ago. A month later, the mom took her off, uh, off gluten and her need for insulin, she says, decreased dramatically. As of August, so um, seven months into the, the therapy of a gluten-free diet, she's been completely off insulin and doing great. Um, and she actually wants to come here to the clinic, and she said, you know, it gets very lonely on this road less traveled, which I, I thought was, was very um, well said, and she said, thanks for validating that a gluten-free diet does indeed have a significant impact on, on many of today's diseases, including type 1 diabetes. So, uh, you know, obviously that's just one parent writing in, but um, this happens a lot. So let's look now at some research. This was research in Immunology uh, Journal 2012, so very recent, and it talked about the fact that um, the title uh, said that dietary gluten alters the balance of pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory cytokines. And then it went on, but there was more words that <laughs> would be more confusing. But the, but the point is this, is that um, with type 1 diabetes, celiac disease, really all autoimmune diseases, what you're looking at is that the body is um, making what's called an antibody, and that antibody is made by the immune system, and it starts attacking a part of the body. So in type 1 diabetes, it's, it's the beta cells of the pancreas, and those are the cells that make insulin. So for these people, once enough of those cells have been destroyed, they're no longer able to make insulin, and then they need to take it for the rest of their lives. Um, it, and it's a very serious disease. It's, insulin's a very important hormone, and um, blindness is associated with diabetes. And, and losing limbs due to poor circulation and kidney damage, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not a nice disease, and of course, anything we can do to um, improve our treatment of it, avoiding it, would obviously be a good thing. In this particular study, what they were looking at is the fact that your immune system makes these pro-inflammatory chemicals, and those are the things that attack, uh, of course, where there's bad, there's good, and the immune system also can make anti-inflammatory chemicals that are actually protective against inflammation and degeneration, to simplify it. And in this particular study, what they found is that uh, a gluten-containing diet, and, and this study was done on mice, which they frequently are. These research studies are done on mice. And what they found was that the gluten caused an increase in the uh, pro-inflammatory, meaning creating inflammation um, chemicals, 
and that a gluten-free diet actually increased the production of the anti-inflammatory chemicals. And the way these, this, these authors actually began the explanation of their study was um, this quote. It, they said, several studies have documented that dietary modifications influence the development of type 1 diabetes. So they said they specifically wanted to look at, we know there's an influence, we know gluten influences it, how does it influence it? And what they came up with was this difference in these chemicals being produced. Gluten causing a surge of pro-inflammatory chemicals, non-gluten diet causing a diminishment of the pro-inflammatory, and, and even better, causing an increase in the anti-inflammatory chemicals. So I, I hope that makes sense, and this is research to support this. So some of you need to stop yelling at me, because you've been yelling at me for about six months. <laughs> Not all of you, I know. Anyway, uh, another study going back uh, a little further was done by Alessia Fasano. Uh, you might know him as the lead researcher at the Maryland um, Celiac Research Center at the University of Maryland uh, Celiac Research Center. Dr. Fasano does a, a tremendous amount of research uh, regarding celiac disease and gluten sensitivity. He did a study back in 2005, uh, particularly on diabetic prone rats, um, where uh, these rats uh, he found were had a very leaky gut. So what we know is that our immune system, 80% of it is housed in our gut. And so when those antibodies are made and then they leave the gut, once they leave, then they can go and attack parts of the body. This is what happens in autoimmune disease, specifically in diabetes, as we mentioned. It, attaches, it attacks these particular cells of the pancreas. So what he did in these rats that were particularly prone to, to diabetes, and he found they had a very leaky gut, meaning a lot of these antibodies could escape, easily is he gave them a, 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 a drug and what it did is it prevented the leaky gut. It gave them a gut more on lines with um, rats that were not diabetic prone. And what he found, because typically these diabetic prone rats, as soon as they entered puberty, they 100% they of them had diabetes. They were very, very diabetic prone. But in his study, preventing the leaky gut 70% of these rats did not develop diabetes. This was huge, and it really started the appreciation that the integrity of the gut had a lot to do with autoimmune disease, not just type 1 diabetes, but there's over 100 different autoimmune diseases. And this research has gotten supported by more current research, and one of the biggest dietary influences in leaky gut is gluten. So we've come full circle. I hope this helps to clarify it a bit. I'm not saying that every type 1 diabetic has celiac disease. I'm not saying every type 1 diabetic uh, could absolutely be influenced positively by a gluten-free diet. What I am saying is that there's enough research out there that if you have a child with type 1 diabetes or you yourself has type 1 diabetes, it is certainly worth a trial of a gluten-free diet to see because Sometimes we feel, because we're on insulin, that, that that pancreas is dead, meaning those beta cells that make insulin, they're all gone. But it turns out they're not frequently all gone. They're very suppressed, they're very stressed, but you take some stress off of them and you actually have enough of them left that, like this young lady uh, that I started this video with, uh, she's completely off her insulin. So you don't know until you try. Is it hard to try? No, it isn't. Is it dangerous to try? No, it isn't. Could it avoid type 1 diabetes? It very well could. So I think that's worth it. You let me know. I do love hearing from you, even when you yell at me. So until next time, I wish you very good health.